Welcome to the seven reasons, seven, <laughs> seven reasons why you should not get a coach. Number one, number one, don't get a coach if you don't want to change. Some people are just stuck in the old way of doing things, even though they know it doesn't work for them. Just as if someone was to say to you, there's a faster route to work that you could take that would take off 10 minutes of your journey. Would you take it? Of course you would. Anyone in their right mind would take that faster route. What if it was five minutes? Or what if it was one minute each day? Would you take it? Would you save that time and would you, would you change the route that you're driving on? Of course you would. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? But not everyone does, even if it makes sense. They'll still drive the same old way because they've always done it that way. Now, I don't know how much that time, even if it was one minute, would add up to in a lifetime. Maths is not my forte. Coaching is. The point here is, are you willing to change your behavior? Are you willing to do things differently? Are you willing to think differently? If it means that you are going to have a better life. There's a reason why people don't want to change. They feel it's really hard and it often is without the right coach. The reason is, is, is that we have a part of our brain called the amygdala that, that drives us not to change because it thinks, okay, your survival here is up, utmost. We want you to survive. This part of the brain doesn't care whether you're happy or healthy or wealthy. All it cares about is, is that you live today. And if it means that you do the same thing day in, day out just to live, it will encourage you to do that. And it will make change scary. Because who knows, that change of behavior, that different way of driving to work might actually kill you. So it says, don't do that. Then we have the other part of your brain, which is the neocortex. That's really logical and practical. I can see the sense in the change. So you have, so many people have a bit of a battle going on here. One that comes from fear and one that comes from logic. And I know, I know how scary change can be. Getting a good coach will stretch you. Absolutely, 100%. And it will feel uncomfortable. Some people get this mixed up with intuition. Intuition is vital and it's a really important resource we can use. But fear of change, that's not intuition. Fear to step out and do something different, that's not intuition. That's the amygdala having a freak out and thinking you, you might die if you do something different. But it doesn't really know. It makes an assumption. It's very good at making assumptions. And I know this myself when I first signed up for coaching and it was around $6,000 and I was living hand to mouth at the time. So I had three little children. Uh, that I was supporting and I had no spare money. It was very challenging, but I knew something had to change. I knew I had to do something different to make my life different. Otherwise I'd be living hand to mouth for the rest of my life. I could see the whole pattern laid out in front of me and I didn't like it. So I decided to get a coach. Oh boy, I was shaking, I was trembling, uh, on, I, can I was hyperventilating and then I signed on the dotted line. I signed up for a coach. I could barely feel my fingers because I'd been hyperventilating so much they were tingling. Tears were streaming down my face. The paper that I was signing was wet with them. <laughs> One of the most scariest things that I ever did. I get it. I get how hard it is to change. It was also the most rewarding. It was the most rewarding financially, psychologically, emotionally. It was the most rewarding thing ever. It really changed my life financially and it really changed my life psychologically. It made a huge difference. But it required change and it was scary. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> I get it. If you don't want to change, then don't get a coach. Okay, number two, the second reason why you should not get a coach. Number two, the second reason why you should not get a coach. And that is, if you cannot tolerate being challenged, if you think you know it all, some people get a coach just to confirm that they're smart and they do know what they're talking about, <laughs> but they resist being challenged. Challenged on the way they're doing things, challenged on their beliefs, challenged on how big a game they're playing, then they should not get a coach. A good coach will challenge you and will keep you accountable. A good coach will see your full potential and will hold you to that. A good coach will see the small game that you're playing and challenge you to play a much, much bigger game. It's the game of life. You know, it's actually about fear. Deep down with that I know it allness is really about fear. And I know they're not gonna ever wanna admit that, but it's true. And we all feel fear. It's a normal state to feel fear at times, but it's a good thing to admit that and keep moving forward. I know because when I'm confronted by my coaches, it's a bit of a shock. I can actually feel it in my body. It, it kind of rocks me a little bit. That's exactly what I want. It's exactly what I pay for. And what this does is, is it helps you to step up and be even more authentic. When I say authentic, I mean the person that you, your full potential, that person, 
not the game that the person's been playing before, the full potential, not the half potential or the quarter potential, but the full potential. And if you cannot tolerate being challenged, then do not get a coach. Okay, number three, the third reason why you should not get a coach. The third reason why you should not get a coach. You should not get a coach if you love inefficiency and you love bureaucracy. If you like to do things in a way that doesn't utilize every minute of your time, then don't get a coach. Your time is one of your most valuable assets and the clock is ticking. This life that you're living is finite. And if you want to keep doing things inefficiently and wasting time, then by all means, go ahead and keep doing it. And bureaucracy, what I mean by that is, I mean social bureaucracy. I mean the same way other people have done things. And many, many people, they'll just do the same thing because that's the way it's always been. They don't have a plan, they don't have think outside the box, they don't change the way they're doing things because this is the way it's always been. And here's a story about Grandma Jane. Grandma Jane always used to make a leg of lamb for a Sunday dinner. And she would always cut the end of the leg off and fold it over and put it in the pan. And one day her grandchild was visiting and said, Grandma Jane, why do you always cut off the end of the leg before you put it in the pan and roast it? And Grandma Jane said, well, that's our family tradition. That's the way we've always done it. And the grandchild said, but why? Well, it's the way we used, we've always done it, said Grandma Jane. But I want to know why, said the grandchild. Well, that's enough now because that's the way we do it in this family, said Grandma Jane. But the child was curious, very curious, and wanted to know why. So the child made a journey to the great grandparent's place. And the child asked the great grandparent, why do we cut the end of the leg of the lamb off before we put it in the pan? And the great grandparent laughed and laughed and laughed and said, because my pan was too small, it was the only way to fit it in. I just want to tell you the story to illustrate how ridiculous some of this bureaucracy and inefficiency is if we don't question things. If you like bureaucracy and you love being inefficient, then whatever you do, do not get a coach. Okay, number four, the fourth reason why you should not get a coach. Number four, the fourth reason why you should not get a coach. If you'd rather read a book or you'd rather just listen to a podcast and think, oh, wasn't that interesting? That was nice. That sounds very inspiring. And then do nothing about it, then don't get a coach. There's some people who think that just by absorbing the information is enough. But it's only the very first beginning step. And I know this because I've done it too. I used to be the one that just collected information but didn't really do anything with it. And my life didn't change. Just the realization is it's an important step, but it's only one part of it. Your life's not gonna change unless you complete it, unless you keep working on it, not just listen to the next podcast or read the next book. I'm all for that. I mean, I have an enormous library and I love to read and I love to listen to uh, education. So I get that, but there's a whole lot more to do with it than just, than just absorb the information. So I'm quite a creative person. And I remember years ago when I would see people had made amazing creations, I'd be able to look at it and work out how they did it. And I'd be able to see something, maybe at a market stall or something, and I'd be walking along and I'd see something and it'd have you know, its price on it, this artist had made it, and I'd look at it and I'd say, I can do that, I could make that. And I'd even go so far as to maybe go around the corner and do some drawings of it or take some notes about it so that I could go home and make that thing myself. But you know what, I never did. So basically I didn't end up with the thing. If I just paid for it and bought it, I would have not only supported the artist, but I would have had that thing that I liked. And I know many, many people are like this. I've seen them. I've seen them say, oh, I could make that. Oh, that painting? What's that? A few splashes and all? I could do that. But they don't. They never do. They just say they could. So it took me years to get this, actually, and to realize that when I see something I like, I should just get it because it's gonna save me time and effort and I get to have that beautiful thing and I get to support the world of artists, which is, as some of you might know, a cause very, very dear to my heart. So if you're the kind of person that just wants to do it all yourself and just listen to an audio book or a podcast or read a book and then not do anything, then don't get a coach. What are we up to? We're up to number five, the fifth reason why you should not get a coach. Number five, the fifth reason why you should not get a coach. If you just want people to flatter you, if you want to just feel good in the moment, and this is fake people who want fake compliments to make themselves feel fake good. And if you'd rather just have fake compliments, someone like this could just have a robot that spits out fake compliments to them. It's just programmed to boost their ego and not really make any real difference. I know, compliments feel good. I like them too. It does lift people, but it doesn't make your life better in the long run. 
whether you get compliments or not it's like a it's like a band-aid it's time to rip that band-aid off if you want to get a coach just so you get compliments and flattery then don't get a coach of course this is completely different to uh, your internal self-talk which a coach will help you with and actually being able to give yourself those good feelings about yourself and I think feeling really good about yourself is very important I'm not talking about putting you down absolutely not I'm talking about the truth we can get compliments anywhere it's very easy to get flattery for the sake of it doesn't really do anything it just keeps you doing the same old pattern over and over and over and over again it doesn't really help you to change it just feels good I know I like it too we all like compliments but that's not the reason to sign up with a coach if you just want a coach to get flattery and to boost your ego don't get a coach we're up to number six the sixth reason why you should not get a coach we're almost there the sixth reason why you should not get a coach if you are a poor judge of talent and when you can't tell the difference between someone who really wants to help you make change in life and one that just brown noses you then don't get a coach I don't have actually much more to say on this point a coach will take your goals really seriously and a good coach as long as those goals are ethical will help you and do everything they can to get you to that goal they're not interested in brown nosing you they're not interested in that they're interested in you getting what you want in life and like I said the ethics always play a very important role to a good coach so if someone wanted to do something really dodgy there is no place in my programs for them at all if their goal is to manipulate people or to crush people or to do anything illegal then absolutely out of the question no way at all I only ever take people who have good ethics because when people hit those goals they have they end up gaining can you hear the crows <laughs> they're agreeing with me if you can't tell the difference between someone who wants to help you get to your goals and someone who's brown nosing you then don't get a coach what are we up to ah number hang on yep seven number seven the seventh reason why you should not get a coach number seven the seventh reason why you should not get a coach if you just want a friend or someone to whinge to about why your life's not perfect and why all these terrible things have happened to you and why you're broke or why you're lonely or why you're sad if you just want someone to whinge to and to pat your back and say they're there then don't get a coach I know it can sometimes feel good to get things off your chest I absolutely get that but there's a difference between getting something off your chest and going back and keeping on doing the same behavior that created it in the first place or getting it off your chest and saying right I need to do something different now I need to move forward and out of this so this does not happen again I know that the whinging can feel good in the moment absolutely and do I do it of course sometimes I have a really good old whinge and in the moment that can actually just release a little bit of the pressure and perhaps even help me think a little bit clearer about my next steps but people can get trapped in the whole whinge cycle and their friends honestly they can get a bit sick of it after a while if all you ever do is whinge to your friends and why this isn't happening why that isn't working why your life isn't how you thought it should be then you don't take any steps to make it different it doesn't make any sense does it so if you just want a buddy to whinge to then don't get a coach because a coach is going to let you whinge for enough of the time and then nip that in the bud very quickly and say right do you want this to change because if you do let's set in place the steps to do so do not get a coach if you just want a shoulder to cry on because you're not utilizing that coach to its full potential a good coach can completely turn your life around but some people just prefer to whinge and complain and then not do anything about it well, then they should never get a coach so there we have it the seven seven oops <laughs> too many fingers <laughs> the seven reasons why you should not get a coach I'd love to hear your comments about this so please go ahead and comment 